zone is sectioned off, sir. Please step back. Agent Norman Jaden, FBI. You got a badge or something, Mr. Jaden? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Check. You can pass. I'm looking for Lieutenant Blake. Is he around? I saw him arrive earlier. He's here somewhere. Thanks. Reporters? Already? Huh. They seem well informed. Video memo recording, Agent 47023, Nam and JD, Tuesday, October 4th, 2011. Time is 8.14 a.m. The crime scene is compromised by all these people. I doubt there'll be many clues left. If there were any to start with. Hey! You there! What are you doing? Lieutenant Blake? I'm Agent Norman Jaden from the FBI. I went by your office this morning. They told me you'd be here. Now if you're looking for rain, dead bodies, and highways, you come to the right place. Like... Can you tell that asshole with the bulldozer to stop for five minutes? I can't hear myself think here. Right away, Lieutenant. Well, are you coming, Jaden? So, what happened? Some guy taking his dog for a piss found a body about six o'clock this morning. We don't know much more right now. Based on what we've seen, looks like the work of the origami killer. Any witnesses? None yet. Given the neighborhood, I'd be surprised if anybody saw anything. Any news on the coroner? He's on his way, Lieutenant. We've been waiting for an hour, for fuck's sake. Has the time of death been established? Based on the rigor mortis, must be less than six hours ago. We should know more once the coroner has had a look. There are a lot of people on the crime scene. Aren't you afraid your men might destroy some clues? You don't find proof sitting behind a desk. And we're not in the habit of trampling things into the ground, even if we're not in the FBI. No. No, of course not. That's... that's not what I meant. Tony! I don't want to see a single shit-stirring journalist within a mile of here. You got it? Yes, Lieutenant! Do we know the cause of death? There are no marks on the body. Chances are he was drowned. Like the others. Body being identified? No, not yet. We should know more later today. Listen, I, I'm a little busy here. Why don't we discuss all this a little later? Back at the office. Oh, no problem. I understand. Do you mind if I have a look around? Be my guest. Hey, Jaden. Come and see me if you find anything, okay? We're on the same team now. The body is still here. There's a railroad track near where the body was left. Same as all the other victims. Way too many people here. They're trampling all over the crime scene. The body is still here. Strange character that Blake. Didn't seem too pleased to see me. Comment, the victim is lying on his back. No visible signs of violence. An 
orchid was placed on the victim's chest. A small origami figure in the right hand. Fingers were probably closed after the time of death. Superficial wound on the right thigh. Blood analysis suggests it could be post-mortem. Probably a scratch that occurred when the body was being moved. The blood report indicates an advanced and long-lasting state of exhaustion. His face is covered with mud, like the other victims. The victim is Jeremy Bowles, declared missing five days ago. See reference file. Harry comment, sample of no interest, comes from one of the policemen present on the wasteland. Dead cat. The FBI doesn't keep files on dead cats. Not yet. Orchid pollen detected, probably from the flower left on the body. Sample of no interest. Comes from one of the policemen present on the waste ramp. I'm heading back to the office. You staying? No, I've seen enough. I'm leaving too. Harry, comment, sample of no interest. Comes from one of the policemen present on the wasteland. Impressive. Seems the only traces the killer left are those he intended to leave. He knew exactly what he was doing. Right down to the tiniest detail. Orchid pollen. Something the killer couldn't control. Can it be traced back to its source?
The body got scratched when it was moved. There may be more traces of blood around here. A butterfly. A fox. A crab. Death. Death. I have the results of your MRI scans. Everything seems to be normal. There is no physical damage from the accident. However, I am worried about your psychological condition. I know it's not easy, but you've got to start over, Ethan. You're not responsible for what happened. It's my fault Jason is dead. He'd still be alive if I'd been looking out for him. It was an accident. Accidents happen every day. You can't blame yourself forever for your son's death. How is Sean? He's a very solitary kid, you know, very focused within himself. He's really close to his mother. With me, he's more distant. And what about you, Ethan? What do you feel? I no longer want to live. I have no reason to continue. Not even for your son, Sean. I couldn't save Jason. Sean doesn't need a father like me. Is there something else you wanted to tell me, Ethan? Have there been any cases of split personality developing after concussion? Like people doing things but having no memory of what they've done. Like somebody else had been doing them. We know that in certain cases, a violent shock to the brain can cause serious psychological disturbances, like schizophrenia, for example. That's the end of this session. Uh, we'll continue this conversation next week. You were lucky, Ethan. It's very rare to survive such a traumatic accident. I don't exactly feel lucky, Doctor. Aren't you gonna go play with the other kids? I don't feel like it. How did things go at school today? The teacher yelled at me for being late again. 
She's going to send me home the next time it happens. I'm sorry about that, Sean. Next time, we'll really pull it together, okay? Do you want to eat something? Is something the matter, Sean? No, I'm all right. Sean looks so miserable. I wish I could help him. A boomerang? Do you know how to use it? No, not really. I can never make it come back. Can I give it a try? Dad. Do you want to give it a try? I won't be able to do it. Oh, come on, let's try it together. Now, the main thing is to get the right position at the beginning. Now, you've got to throw it straight and a little to the right. Now, throw it! Good job, Sean. See? That wasn't so hard. I'll find something else to do with him. I haven't been on a seesaw in a long time. What do you think? Yeah! Come on, Dad! Make me fly! <laughs> he seems to be having fun. It's been a long time since I've seen that smile. I'll find something else to do with him. What about that merry-go-round? I bet I could push you so fast you won't be able to stay on it.
Good training for astronauts, though. <laughs> Looks like rain's coming. I think we better go. Okay. You know, sometimes I remember before, I mean, when Jason was still here. Sometimes I wish everything could just be the way it was before. Me too, Sean. Me too. Hey, Dad, can I have a ride on the carousel? Can I? Sure. Go pick a horse and get on. I'll get a ticket. One, please. That's a dollar.
Do you think it's gonna take long? No, he should be finished soon. I gotta see Captain Perry. Orders are orders. Gee, I hate internal politics bullshit. God, I'm bored. I hate having nothing to do. Let's get the formalities out of the way so I can get back some real work. I could go for a little Larry time right about now. I'm off, Charlene. I'll look at the reports later. I'll cancel all appointments for this afternoon. Okay. Oh, Captain. Agent Norman Jaden from the FBI is here. Jaden, of course. We've been expecting you. I'm in a bit of a hurry. Do you mind tagging along? We can talk as we walk. Yeah, of course. I wanted to introduce myself before getting started, but uh, perhaps there's a better no, time. No, no. it's fine. I just have to get to the press conference. We have them every day now. Believe me, it's not always easy finding something to tell them. Fortunately, today we have some news. Have you met Lieutenant Blake yet? Yeah, we met this morning. He has his own methods, but he's a good cop. I'm sure you'll get on well together. Do you know how to tie a knot in a necktie? I guess. To be frank with you, I could have done without the FBI on this one, but the press are all over us. This origami killer case crept up on us, and it's fast becoming a national concern. There are hundreds of killers in this country, but what do you know? This guy is exotic. He leaves flowers and origami figures. Work that one out. Then the press get onto it, and we suddenly become the center of the universe. I'm here to arrest a serial killer. With all due respect, sir, the rest of it, it's none of my business. No, of course not. All I'm asking is that you make progress, and fast. The press want a perpetrator, and we're gonna have to serve him up on a silver platter. Hmm. Not bad. Oh, go see Charlie and she'll show you to your office. Yeah, check in on the press conference if you're interested. It'll give you an idea of the political climate around here. Thank you, sir. Welcome to the club, Jaden. Captain Perry is doing his press conference now. Might be interesting to have a look. I should get Perry's assistant to show me my office. I can't wait to get to work. I'll have a look around the station. Stretch my legs for a bit. I saw Blake when I arrived. Maybe I should go talk to him. The body of Jeremy Bowles. I'm dying of thirst. Where's the water cooler when you need one? Strange character, Captain Perry. Seems to be more interested in meeting the press than investigating the crime. The state in which the body was found suggests the methodology of the origami killer. The investigation should confirm this in the coming days. The police are continuing to work around the clock to find the murderer as quickly as possible. I'll field some questions.
Nice watch. Oh, it's the present we offer to our new lieutenants. We bought the same model each year for the past 20 years for each promotion. It optimizes everybody's time, and it's the kind of thing that always goes down well. You can contribute to our fund if you like. We're still a few dollars short. Sorry, I... I don't have any chance. No problem. Maybe next time round. Captain Perry said you could show me to my office? Yes, of course. Follow me. This... this is my office? That's where I was told to take you. If you need anything, you know where to find me. Okay, time to work. Step one, change the office. Well, well. Looks like there's something new. Harry, comment. Tire tracks on the side of the road behind the railroad line. It may be the killer's car. No prints or specific clues. Hmm. Nothing much to go on. Hmm. A common species. That doesn't help much.
killer's car is probably a Chevrolet Malibu 83. Eight victims in the last three years. All boys, aged between nine and thirteen. No signs of violence. The victims disappear from public places in broad daylight. No one notices anything. Bodies are found three to five days later. Drowned. In rainwater. Always the same ritual. An origami in the hand, an orchid on the chest. The victims have always been dead for less than six hours when they were found, which means they remained alive for several days before being drowned. Over 3,500 people questioned. Over 100 suspects interrogated. Not a single lead to go on. There is always a railroad line adjacent to where the bodies are found. And all the victims disappeared in the fall. The killer is white, aged between 30 and 45. He is intelligent, calm, and determined. An organized type. He has a car. He's probably employed, but his work allows him free time. I need to take some. I'm gonna faint if I resist. It's all right. I know I can make it. I know. I know I can make it. Is everything all right, sir? This is Lieutenant Blake, Mr. Marshall. Could you please tell him what happened? It, it was this afternoon. 
the, I went to the park with my son Sean. We played together for a while, and then he wanted to go on the carousel, so I put him on one of the wooden horses. And when I turned back, Sean had disappeared. Exactly what time did you arrive at the park? Try to remember exactly, Mr. Mars. Every detail can be important. It must have been about... Four fifteen. Yeah, that's it, 4.15. I remember exactly, because I looked at the clock in the park when we arrived. What was your son wearing when he disappeared? He was wearing a coat. A brown coat. And a pair of pants. Black pants. How could Sean have disappeared without you even noticing? Weren't you right by the carousel? I went for a short walk around the park just for a few minutes. When I got back, the carousel had stopped and Sean wasn't there. You say you took your son to the park after school, but you didn't report him missing until 8.15. Why did it take you so long to contact the police? I searched the whole neighborhood for him. I, I thought he couldn't have gone far. Did Sean have any particular difficulties, Mr. Mars? Anything that might have caused him to run away? Sean is a sensitive child. Our relationship has been a little difficult recently. Everything okay at school? Any particular problems between you and your wife? My wife and I have been separated for the last six months. But Sean would not have gone off without telling his mother or me. All right. That's all the questions I have for now. You're free to go, Mr. Mars. We'll continue to look for Sean overnight. We'll contact you if we have any more questions. Do... Do you think the origami killer... Listen. Your son's probably just run off and he'll turn up in a couple hours. But what if it is the origami killer? Well, then we have about four days to find him alive. 